and welcome back to episode 11 of Tagged. Thanks to Victoria, every bit different. I am joined with my co-host, Sarah Rowe. Welcome, Rowey. Thanks, Hasco, the film star. <laughs> um, it is great to be here with you again. I believe you have a list of things there that you want to pull me up on. I do. What I have put to our producers is I want to create a compilation of Rowie's mispronounced words. And that's, do you know what? First of all, I need to apologize. Probably not to you. To all the Irish fans. Yes, to the Irish fans. Because during the week we shared um, a piece of content. We put it on our Instagram pages. And there are a couple of Irish people that weren't happy with the way that I was picking on your accent. Hmm. Now, in true heart, true form, I'm really sorry if I've offended anyone. But you're Irish. Like in, in my expectations <laughs> and what you've told me is... I think you can take that. You're well, pretty you know happy with it. we speak another language as well. Do you know this? I found this out when you first joined the show. I did not even you know. You need to do a bit of research on Ireland. Now Gaelic. Just, yeah, Gaelic. So <laughs> my name is Sirka Nirua in Irish. <laughs> I beg your pardon. No, I did not know this part. So try to say it. Sirka Nirua. Sirka Nirua. Yeah, so Conasathothu. Connors of Thorthel. Yes, that. So there can we go. Can you make, okay, you tell me to make a sentence and I'll say it to the Irish people. Okay. So um, even anything oh, you want. Thought on green egg tatten of suspair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so wait, say that again. Thought on green egg tatten of suspair. Thought on green and a, and a hat and some spare. <laughs> <laughs> so that means the sun is in the sky. <laughs> You could have got me with absolutely anything. There. I could have, but to be honest, my my Irish needs brushing up. It's not great, and so, that was the first thing that came to my mind. So is it? Can, it's Irish or it's Gaelic? As it's, in, like you know, when you're saying I'm speaking English. So many so. Irish people are going to correct me on my grammar mm -hmm. there. I bet you. But um, yeah, it's so the Irish language is spoken in a couple of parts of mm -hmm. the country. It's still spoken everywhere, but like there's a couple of areas that it's more spo uh, spoken more. It's so cool. Well, and for anyone that obviously didn't like the way that I treated you last week, I'm actually Welsh. So my dad was born in Wales. Right. So I've, I've, Can you do a Welsh accent? He, he always said, hello, boy. Oh. I don't know. That's the only thing he remembers. I'm not going to imitate the Australian accent either because yeah, I'm actually give, so bad at it. Give us a go. Come I can't. Give us your best Aussie accent. No, because you know I'm going to say shrimp on the barbie or something like that. But no, we're not going there. Anyway, Hasco, on to the football okay. chat. How is your body? Body is good. We had a good win on the weekend, so we played against Geelong. But that would have been one of the most... I would say like physical, but it was a tough fought out game. Like it was, it was pretty close. It went down to the wire in the last quarter, but my body is sore after that and still sore now. I think what I'll eat three, four days post, but um, yeah, no, other, other than that, it's holding on very well, very nicely. And I'm excited for the next week. And we're still mm. coming off the back of essentially the compressed mm. fixture. So it's probably the flow and effect of that. We talked about it um, mentally and physically, yeah. I suppose, how you're feeling after the con condensed fixture. Yeah, well, again, I, we can rip into this, but I think physically fine now. I was, well, lucky. I had one week off as well, so I didn't get to play the yeah. Kangaroos game. But that was probably, a, I guess, an excess and a flow on of the condensed period that I, my body couldn't get up for the last round. So or last period of our condensed. So that I feel is good. I feel like we're looking at some some things that we haven't spoken about is probably the mental fatigue yeah. at this point of the season. And I know I was, I was just talking to you around having a bit of anxiety and and I, I'm not saying that that's because of the condensed period, but I think, you know, at this point in the season, your whole body is kind of got screaming at you for a bit of downtime. So I guess I'm, I'm looking forward now. Well, you've got a 10 day break, yeah. but at the moment it's been really nice just having the seven days um, a seven day break and be able to have an extra day or two in between to recover. What yeah, definitely. You? And just being able to prepare and kind of have that time to prepare. But I think with the condensed round, there's so many angles that you could look mm. at it from. And I'm sure the AFL will look at it at some point. But, you know, from, I suppose, crowds to numbers watching it on TV to our own GPS um, and what that looked like, say, from round one to when the condensed fixture was on. Also, the scoring, the low scoring mm. games at the weekend, looking at all those things and obviously the mental fatigue as well. Because like you said, the last couple of weeks, you feel like you haven't had a day off. I probably feel the same. It's probably the nature of the work we do as well mm. with you doing so much commentating and also um, football on the side. So it's a real balancing act. But you're also coming into 
crunch time as well the really important games where the pressure is rising as well so there i'm sure there's a feeling of that as well you've three really important games coming up too so it's all adding that all in and then your body being sore as well so it's completely understandable well we've got yeah speaking of the three rounds we've got richmond being melbourne this week Essendon in Darwin and at the moment looking at the Darwin weather it's 36 degrees oh, every single day so it's and green egg tan of despair yeah say it again wait say that again Thought on <laughs> green egg tan of despair and green and satin despair <laughs> we'll, we'll get it's to that it's the last bit it's the last bit did I even get close <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then our last game is against Hawthorne, who's, uh, again, arguably the most informed team around sort of your North Melbourne. So I'm excited for what's to come there. But what about Collingwood and, and how you go? And we spoke as well, and we've spoken a couple of times, is the expectation around Collingwood season, I think from an outsider's, it's very, you know, what what's going on behind the four walls. We've spoken to you and you've said the culture around there, everyone loves your coach. Everyone is still having a good time. But what does that do to the players at the moment? Well, like you are as a player, you're a fierce competitor and all mm. you want to do is compete and all you want to do is win. And that's the only reason we play. So obviously with not winning games, you're really disappointed. But we have to choose what we focus on now because we can decide to focus on that and go, oh, there's three games left. We have no chance whatever Mm. where you go no take pride in your performance as a group take pride in your performance as an individual work on our game system play players in I don't know different positions maybe get people to have to have experience get the younger players bring them on and there's still so much to be achieved for us so we're choosing to focus on that now obviously and gain some momentum with that but yeah it's been a disappointing obviously because you do play mm. to win well what about um Bree Davey you played a 50th game on the way yeah couldn't so quite get the win, but yeah you celebrate you celebrate the small wins obviously mm. at this time and you push numbers in the gym and you do other things like that but Bree to play her 50th game and it feels like it's been forever ever coming mm. really well, like she's, she's a she's an icon of the game yeah and she's just been such an integral part of our team and for her to only play her 50th game at the weekend we were all like how have you not played more mm. games and that's the unfortunate thing with uh, her two ACLs prior and you know a bit of a broken season with injuries this year it's so disappointing and because the season is so short how much mm-hmm. that impacts but it was so good to finally celebrate it with her and we all had so much to say and just within the four walls the compliments and obviously the external world you know saw everyone speak about Brie Davy and how great she is but like our internal world we just pumped her up all week mm-hmm. and we were just like telling her how much we appreciated her but she's such a big part of our group. So, Rowie, I want to ask you a question around the players at the moment that are hitting their peak. So, there's a couple in the league, but one that stands out to you at the moment. Okay, well, I love Jazz Fleming's Mm. work and I've admired her all season. And when we played against him, I was like, where'd she come out of? She's just doing so well this season. But I think it's... From Hawthorne or for people that haven't From Hawthorne, yeah. But I think it's the combination of Eliza West gets in, gets under, gets the ball out to Batesy and then... Jazz gets the ball on the outside and can make really clear decisions. But I think the way she's playing at the moment is an absolute joy to watch. Mm. Who's your fair? Well, she's one of those young ones. I, I mean, I'll stick on Hawthorne, but she's one of those young ones that I feel like has developed her game in the last year or so and is having a breakout year. Yeah. I'm going to stick on Hawthorne because I want to talk about Gilroy and McDonough. So Aileen Gilroy and Anya McDonough, I got that right. Use it to my ears so you can speak yeah. about the Irish all day. Well, I feel like it's worth talking about because you know the Irish girls. The way that they play is a different way to obviously the Aussies that are playing football because you bring such flair. It's a different style. Like It's yeah. an unconventional method of kicking the football, but it still somehow works. So Aileen in, in particular, or yeah. Gilroy, she's got that kick around her body and she can absolutely belt it from about 50, 60 metres out. Yeah. So I think the thing with Irish players are they're so predictable to us Irish. We know exactly what they're doing and what they're thinking of doing because mm. it's it's so related to Gaelic football. It's textbook from Gaelic football. Right. But so when I see Aileen and Anya link up, I'm like, I know what they're trying to do and how they find space. But I think the link between the two of them is critical to Hawthorne's ball movement. And I think that as well, I know the way they communicate with each other. They have very honest relationship, but they have this chemistry on field that 
that is very hard to stop but it's just like Aileen does often the same thing but does it so well every mm. time that she can't be stopped she's powerful she's strong she's athletic Anya knows that the ball is coming out the back or the ball is coming into space and it's very predictable to each other but yeah they've been incredible this year and they're so important to Hawthorne well I wonder would you ever AFL have an Irish side in the AFL WWE if they did well there's 37 of us yeah. so we have a team it actually you have to make the team yeah to get the Irish players all on one team. But I know for a fact, if us Irish players played against the Australian players, we would play the game differently. Yeah. We would try play it a lot more uncontested. We'd move the ball. We wouldn't play the mark. Mm. Like we would want to move the ball really quickly, like the way we do in Gaelic football, which is in ways our greatest strength and greatest weakness, because sometimes we get caught out for yeah. doing that. But um, yeah, we would play it in a very different way. So hopefully, I know there has been talk about the International Real Series mm. with the men's and the women's. Hopefully that comes to fruition and I wonder will it be Irish players at home in Ireland playing Australian yeah, all Australian or will it be the Irish players who are playing in the AFLW league against the Australian all Australian mm. squad surely like, you'd pull every Irish player out of their current team and put them in another team <laughs> well I don't know but would you like to it play would be do you like, if you, have you played against an Irish before because it's it's a different way like sometimes I'm like I come up against an Irish yes and it's your a different teammate way to how do I say Mor yeah, Mor Mern, yeah. Marion 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 oh, here we go Marion <laughs> Marion so just <laughs> like M E I M E M U I know how her actual name yeah. spelled but it, it on paper to me it looks like Morian. Mern. Mern. Yeah. Okay, Mern. Mern Atkinson. She was ruthless. Like, she was great, though. She was oh, great to play do, against. Do but not she was like, win at all costs. Yeah. Win at all costs. I reckon we're going to see about 50 Irish next year by the mm. time. Like, that's a colossal number when you think about it. If you also think about taking that many players out of aflw say you took 35 of the best aflw players out of the competition mm. what it does to the game at home so it's yeah, a it's yeah so it's, it's so interesting the way it's evolved we could but talk about it for hours anyway, but yes. we've got look ahead at round eight because we've as we mentioned we're down to three rounds yeah. left there are a number of teams that are still vying for finals so you've got north melbourne hawks brisbane adelaide and richmond all yes. currently top five that are sort of sitting in that gap that look yeah. like they're going to make finals also, Adelaide, Richmond still potentially not. Yeah. I think the standout clashes for me there are Port versus St Kilda this weekend for mm -hmm. round eight. And Port also have GWS um, after that and they have Gold Coast Suns. So they have a real chance, I think, at creeping up the ladder. And then you look at Melbourne who have Richmond this mm. weekend, which is a really important game for them and for you guys as well to be tested. And also then Melbourne have Hawthorne and then Collingwood after that. So they're in a That's tricky cool. position as well, but I think they have a real chance Mm. Well, you've got four teams currently, St Kilda, Port Adelaide, West Coast, Melbourne, all on 16 points, sitting in the top eight to 11 teams. Yeah. So the amount of movement that can still possibly happen is crazy. Frio lost to Carlton on the weekend, again in another nail biter yeah. at the very end of the game. Carlton put themselves up with a goal in the last minute or so of the game. Frio needing to win. They're only four points out of the eight. Yeah. So if they lose any more games for them as well, they've got the, the Western Derby or Derby for those that are over in, in WA. That's happening this weekend. And now it's against West Coast, who has been a little bit up and down with their form. But at the moment, you know, in a Derby or Derby that, you know, anything can happen. Yeah, I know. And I think you look at some of the games from last week as well and you look at the top teams and how they seem to be going from strength to strength, like the likes of Hawks, mm -hmm. Adelaide, Brisbane. They just keep getting better every week. And you look at Adelaide responding from their loss against Melbourne to GWS to score 92 to 28, which is, mm, you huge. know, a massive number to stack up. And then I think when I look at your game as well last week, Richmond versus Geelong, Geelong seemed to be the nearly team who mm -hmm. maybe still can term in terms of calculations make it, but seem to be having so many great performances but not getting the win in the mm. end so they probably have been a disappointment this season well they again they played finals another one is um gold coast so gold coast currently bottom of the ladder and they played finals last year and they haven't won a game this season so i think that's just the crazy thing about aflw and the beauty of it is that there is so much fluctuation across from one season to the other in teams being able to perform and and flip their seasons around so yeah and i think that's the great thing for fans and 
to talk about fans, the fan engagement mm. that the AFLW have created this year, which has been great. And that reminds me as well of last week you spoke about Hannah. Yes. So Hannah, who gave you a letter mm. and she was in the crowd and you've been searching for Hannah over yes. the last week or two. Have you found Hannah? Can you talk to us more about the letter and give us more context around that? Yeah, so I did. I had a young girl, um, early teens, I think it was, who was hanging over the fence at at one of the Richmond games at Punt Road. And one of my teammates came up to me and said, hey, Hosko, you need to go and see her because she's quite hysterical. Like I reckon she's one of your biggest fans. And I ran over and she was, she was crying. And almost that it reminds me of the hyperventilating scenes where you've got a, plastic, a paper bag and you're going in and out. The poor thing, she was, I, I just could hardly get a word out, but I I said to her, cause I, you know, you're looking up at the fence and I couldn't quite interact properly. So I said, hey, just come around here and somewhere where I could actually see her in a bit closer. So I've given her a hug. And then again, the tears came out, but halfway through she's like, I have a letter for you. So I opened it up and it's one of the most heartfelt letters and. And gorgeous just one of those moments that you know I you think about your why and like why do I play football and what is it that I love about football and and this is my reason I think when you get to engage with young fans and supporters and um you know some of the some of the stuff I hope she doesn't mind me sharing but some of the stuff in the letter was more around how I've impacted her life and I had no idea about that like it's you know she has a bad day and she'll look at all the AFLW players and know that, you know, they might have had a bad game, but somehow they bounce back and they can respond and they turn up every day. So I think, like, I take those moments and I've got this cute little pink bracelet on as well from um, one of our coach's young daughters that um, she made that and came and saw me at the end of the game. And I, I don't know, I just, like I said, I still kind of pinch myself at these moments when that happens because it just genuinely... I don't know, it just makes me happy seeing these young girls that just grow up seeing, you know, what the word was seeing their heroes. And I'm like, how how do you sit there and realise you're a hero for someone? Yeah, and I think that's the thing as an athlete, like you're thinking every day you're trying to be better and you're kind of so caught Mm. up in your own internal world that you don't realise that you're impacting so many people. And you never really think of yourself like Mm. that. You're like, what am I doing that yeah. you're seeing that I can't see in myself, yeah. essentially? But yeah, there's there's so many ha- like lovely stories like that. I have a girl called Sally who lives in Innescrone in County Sligo in Ireland. Mm. And she basically has Crohn's disease. And every six weeks she has to get an infusion. And she loves Gaelic football and follows AFLW. And I gave her, my auntie asked would I give her a pair of my football boots. And I gave her a pair of my boots and she wears them to training. But she doesn't actually wear them on the field she doesn't like getting them dirty oh. but how much it means to her and I'm like the smallest gesture in the world can mean so much yeah. to that those kids lives and we really don't realize the impact we're having on those people but like, yeah you get many messages that you're like thank you for taking the time mm. out of your day to send these lovely words to me so we talk about all the sledging and all those yeah. other things that we get but you get so many of those great messages that maybe we don't talk about mm. enough and this a real impact one of the messages sorry i'm gonna reach down and grab something because hannah did i saw her again at the game and i was over the thing and she had this um she had a present for me so she'd put it in wrapping paper and i'm unwrapping it now for those that don't know (laughs) i used to play at carlton for four years now she's given me this scarf and it's a lovely scarf i feel it's but i'd say it's better than a lot of the quality so i don't know whether it's been made or if it's whatever so on one side it says richmond till i die i'm holding this and on the other side if we flip it up this way it says we hate carlton so i don't know if this is like a richmond fan group that has done that or if this is (laughs) hannah i need to ask her again but what i did do she gave me that i did put it around my neck for um the rest of the afternoon and then i also gave her a pair of my football boots so it was yeah it was great i'm so glad that i got to meet hannah and i do encourage anyone else that if you you know if you do like you know the idea of the old school letter or, s- or send it to your players or your heroes or vice versa because you know that's made my week and I don't know I sit there and still pinch myself and I love that opportunity to be able to engage with fans and supporters and speaking of heroes we have a very special person we need to talk about mm. from this week the grab of the century I reckon we have mm. Matilda Schultz and yeah. also the article that she wrote prior to Pride Round as well I think it was just such a frank and honest viewpoint can you talk to us a bit about that yeah so Matilda Schultz she's one of our one of the young players Port Adelaide player players yeah from Port Adelaide she plays ruck but was also found deep in the square 
and she took an absolute hanger, a screamer, what it's I was beside it. I actually yeah. had the pleasure of standing underneath it and being like, oh my gosh, how I did she like, do that? I feel like there was a photo or something of you sitting there looking or like standing just underneath the I head. just pulled out last minute. I could have got up there and I was, I could have jumped higher than her. It could have been you. Pretty much guarantee that she's going to get the 2 million velocity points or oh. whatever it is that Virgin's giving away and she's got that. It was outstanding, but you did mention, so leading into Pride Around, what's been so special, so amazing in this past week or so is seeing some players that have been able to come and tell their stories and tell their stories about what Pride means to them. And Matilda Schultz did explain that in an article and she explained very rawly and honestly around, you know, her sexual preferences, that she is in a relationship with a teammate, that her family has a different dynamic where her mum also is, is now seeing a woman and she's proud of that. And yeah. I love that someone at such a young age, I like honestly hats off to you because we saw earlier in the week older women that led the way in AFL talk about how they were shamed for their sexuality or shamed for their experiences mm. and could not feel like they could ever express themselves freely. So I know I just I love it. Like I don't want to make it a big deal purely because yeah. It's, it's not just, a big deal. It is. Who it cares? Is it is. It's just like, but it's amazing to see the generational change. Like that's Isn't the it? biggest thing. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you made to go to the next question, Asko. You don't want to ask me? Oh, like, would, ask you, me. would you date a teammate? <laughs> would I date a teammate? Absolutely. No, no, <laughs> and no again. What I would say is sport is a very emotional place, right? So there's highs and lows. And then we add love into the picture. Mm -hmm. So then we have to ride the highs and lows again. You put the two of those things in one environment. Absolutely no thank you. (laughs) And now credit to people when it works, amazing. Happy days. But if it doesn't work, Costco, all hell would break loose, I would say. And love is rare. Love is blind. Love is a battlefield. You never know when it's going to pop up. You understand how it does in AFLW environments. But it's a very good. It's a difficult choice that you're making there. So it for is. me, it's an absolute no. Hasco, <laughs> I won't ask you the question back because we all know that I'm Cupid and I'm the love doctor. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> it's time for the tag list. Thanks to Victoria, every bit different. So our tag list features anything from restaurants, cafes, podcasts, books, anything we love. We're tagging it. Mm-hmm. So, Tosco, what's on your tag list? Well, we're talking about Dandenong Ranges because for me, it is an amazing place. It's in Victoria. Um, honestly, you just have to go and see it. So, our first one that we're touching on, because we're both going to do this tag list together, is Dandenong Ranges. Yeah. And I thought I've been here. I know you haven't yet, mm-hmm. but can you tell us the first thing on our list? Yeah, so she's challenged me again with <laughs> the language barrier. So, Warburton. <laughs> <laughs> Warburton Adventure Company. I think if you were talking about a nice, um, you know, polished accent, yeah. you said that it's extremely perfect. well. But okay, when you're you coming go. from an Aussie bogan like myself, Warburton. Warburton. Oh, yeah, Warburton. Okay, yeah, that was yeah. really good. So Warburton. Like Warburton. So Warburton yeah. Adventure Company. Now I'm going to list off a, a hell of a lot of things that they do: river tubing, river sledding, caving, mountain biking, and abseiling. So if you are an action-packed person and you love the action adventures. Warburton Adventure Company is for you so make sure you go and check that out I also think that would be such a good activity for a team or a group of people to do yeah. either in pre-season or off-season so I could see the Pies girls getting getting on board <laughs> with some of that mountain biking but also the next place we have and we are going to pronounce this right so it's only mine Yes. in Olinda yes Olinda Olinda yeah. 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 so, so we let it flow but Olinda oh, okay yes so only mine I've been there as well now they make handcrafted chocolate so you walk in and obviously you imagine like a big glass case on the on a table but they've got all the chocolates that you can think of they do an amazing hot chocolate yes they do amazing milkshakes yep I'm a big chocolate fan, so I highly recommend going and checking these out. But they also have just opened, I don't know if it was recently or or a little while ago, but they've opened another Only Mine um, cafe restaurant in Cranbourne West. So for those that are going to head out to my game, Richmond versus Melbourne out in Casey Fields, it's close to Cranbourne West. So I'd highly encourage you to go and check out Only Mine, whether or not 
you're doing that over in Alinda or Cranbourne West. And Alinda, we <laughs> also have another place there that I can't wait to visit. Mm -hmm. And I think with it being spring at the moment, it's the perfect place to visit. So it's called Cloud Hill Gardens. So a lovely garden and restaurant that provides unique dining experience with using fresh local produce. And I think the nicest thing about that is that it changes with the season. So every time mm. you go, it's a different experience. Yeah, it, it's honestly, it's amazing. So both of us, that is our wrap for our town list um in dandenong ranges so make sure you go and check that out because i know it's put a put a few little items on our wish list but it's a stunning place all year round well rowie that is all we have time for on today's episode of tags and next week, we'll have Jack Heverin in studio with a day in the life of AFLW commentator. And I love Hev. He's great fun. I do a lot of commentating with him. He's also from the basketball world, so it'll be exciting to have a good chat with him. But you know what to do. That is the end of the show. Make sure you like, follow us, jump on board, comment on all of our posts, please. We love all the we feedback that we get. We love the interaction last week. More of it, please. Yes, and we'll see you next week. Get ready for all things AFLW. Join myself, Sarah Black, Gemma Bastiani and Lucy Watkin on Credit to the Girls as we break down the latest AFLW results. Tune in Mondays and Wednesdays or listen as a podcast anywhere.